Hello everyone and welcome back to this Python programming series. Today we're going to be learning about several of Python's data types and about variables. So every program needs data to work with, and Python is no exception. In Python we can work with several different data types. We will go over the data types of integers, floats, strings, and booleans. There are several more, but we will learn about those in the future. So first up, we have integers, which are just whole numbers. Then we have floats, which are numbers with decimal places. Then we have strings, which are any characters that are wrapped around single or double quotes. And then we have booleans, which are just true or false values. These are the most common data types used in Python. So now that we know some of Python's data types, let's go ahead and start making some variables. To do this, we will go ahead and choose a name for our variable and assign a value to it using the equal sign. So for example, we'll make a variable called variable and we'll set it equal to one. So there are a few different ways you can name variables. One is to do all lowercase like I just did here. You can make all of the characters capitalized if you want to. You can even put underscores in the variable name and you can also add numbers to it if you want to as well. There are some rules to naming variables in Python. Uh, for example, you cannot start a variable name with a number. As you can see in my editor, it gives an error. You also can't use any dashes in the variable. And you also can't use emojis in the variable name either. So for Python, a variable name must start with a letter or an underscore. A variable name can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscores. A variable name cannot be any of the Python keywords. Well, technically it can, but it might cause issues in your code, so it's better to stay away from them. There are different ways to name your variables as well. One way to name a variable in Python is using snake case, which means between each word that you have in the variable name, you put an underscore. Another way to name a variable in Python is using camel case, which instead of using underscores, you just capitalize the next letter in the variable name. Another common way to name variables is using Pascal case, which is capitalizing the first character of each word in your variable name. I personally use snake case when I'm coding in Python. I hear that's the best practice for Python, but it really doesn't matter which naming convention you use as long as you keep it consistent throughout your code. It is worth noting that it's important to name your variable something meaningful to describe what you're trying to do with it or what kind of data it's trying to hold. So naming variables as just A, S, B, not very descriptive for what they're doing. If you have a very big program, you can get kind of confused to what the variable is doing or what kind of data it's holding. An example of this is let's say we have a number X equals four and a number Y equals two. You can see we do have num in the beginning of both of these, so we know what kind of data this variable will hold. So any variables containing number values, we can do any arithmetic operators on it. So we can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And so an example of this is we have a variable named result, which is adding numx and numy together. And we're going to go ahead and print it with Python's print function. So whenever we go ahead and click this little play button up here to run the file, We'll print the result of six, which is four and two added together. And we can just go ahead and replace this addition with multiplication. So adding a star and we run it. And now we get eight multiplying four and two together. And we also have float values here. So here we've declared a variable called float one and we've set it to 3.14159. And now we've declared a variable float two and set it equal to 2.11111. And we'll go ahead and use the print statement again to add these numbers together. Whenever we run it, we get 5.2527. So for strings, there are different ways to initialize a string variable. One is we can just have single quotes here wrapped around a bunch of characters. Another way is we can have double quotes wrapped around the characters. We can even use triple quotes to have multi-line strings. So for example, we take string two and we add press enter it then produces a syntax error. But if we go to our triple quotes and we press enter, you can see there is no syntax error because it considers this the beginning of the string and this the end of the string. And we can do the same thing with triple quotes. So in Python, we can use the plus operator to add strings together. So for example, we use the print function and we'll take string one and add an exclamation point to it. So now if we run it, we get hello world with the exclamation point added at the end. 
another cool thing we can do with strings is we can do multiplication on it with numbers. So if we take string one and multiply it by three, it will actually print out that string three times. So here we've declared a variable called boolean and we set it equal to true. These are mainly used for conditional statements. So if this variable is true, then we'll do something. If it's false, then we'll do something else. We'll go more into if statements a little later on in conditionals. All right, so I have a challenge for you. We have this variable name value and we are setting it equal to 13. What is the type of this variable? Let me know in the comments below if you know. And that's it for the introduction to data types and variables in Python. Remember, Python has many more data types and operators to work with, but these basics should give you a good foundation to start building your programs. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Python programming videos. See you next time.